CataractCoach.com. How did this lens fragment get here? It's behind the intact posterior capsule in burger space in front of that anti-hyoid face. So our operating guest surgeon here is Dr. Mo Zaye from Auckland, New Zealand. You can see routine case here, nice incision, fast forwarding through it, getting a beautiful rexus. Everything looks fine. That's a beautiful rexus, by the way. And splitting the nucleus here looks like uh, divide and conquer, no stop and chop technique, removing the nucleus very efficiently. Everything goes great. There's no complication here at all. Everything looks nice. The zonules look up normal. But what ends up happening is we fractionate the cataract into tiny little pieces, right? And they swirl around the eye so many times because we're using all this infusion, the flow rate, how many times you turn over the anterior chamber, and a tiny little bit of the cataract material can go through these zonular fibers and end up behind the posterior capsule. You can see here, in this case, one particularly large piece right in the dead center. So you're gonna zoom in here. You can't get this without opening the posterior capsule or maybe even going through the vitreous cavity, go through pars plana. But should you? No, leave it alone. Look what happens here. In the post-op period, that tends to fall out of the visual axis and it'll dissolve slowly or be absorbed with inflammation over time. So don't be a hero here. Leave it alone. Learn from Dr. Mo here. Look at that, a beautiful result. The patient had fantastic vision afterwards and no complications, maybe just a little extra inflammation. We featured this before in this video. CataractCoach.com. Quiz time. What are all these spots that are seen after cataract removal? All this particulate matter. So I'll show you the beginning of the case and we'll kind of get towards the end of it. We'll edit the video so it's brief. So as you can see, we start on normal capsulorexis. Now I know ahead of time, this patient has had prior trauma and does have loose zonules. And so we taking that into account, we're still creating a nice, sufficiently large capsule rexus. The patient has uh, this level of dilation, so we're gonna make our rexus just about as big as the pupil. That's about five millimeters or so. And then we'll get the, the nucleus out, and I'll show you the end of the case here. But you see at the beginning, it looks pretty clear in that anterior vitreous, nothing really going on there. Now here's the end of the case. The capsular bag is sort of viscoelastic. The eye wall is going to go in the capsular bag. The phaco part went pretty routinely. We did a lot of chopping, chopping technique, and we broke up the cataract and emulsified it and aspirated it down. And as I put the lens in the eye, if you look here in the anterior vitreous, you see a lot of particulate matter. Now the posterior capsule is completely intact. There's no defect in the posterior capsule. But there is a defect at the zonules here. And we're gonna look around and make sure there's no big chunks of cortex that are left. And it looks pretty clean in all quadrants, nothing going on there. And in this eye, we did put a capsular tension ring to help stabilize the uh, capsule and to help support the area that had missing zonules. But what's happened is tiny, tiny fragments of lens material have gone into the anterior vitreous. And the reason is they go through the defect in the zonular support. These tiny little fragments, due to the fluidics that we washing the cataract out of the anterior chamber of the eye, anterior segment, we wash this out and some of the small pieces do fall back into that anterior hyaloid face. So the anterior hyaloid face is intact, the posterior capsule is intact, the lens is great. We wash out the viscoelastic from behind the lens. And still, those particulate pieces that you see, the little peppering of, of pieces, those are tiny cataract fragments in the anterior hyaloid face. So what do you do here? Do you do a posterior capsule rexus and then an anterior vitrectomy? You could, but it's not really needed. This is a very small amount of lens material. We've adjusted the video here and post-processing uh, in order to really amplify and show you those in detail. But this is a very minimal amount, and it will certainly dissolve in the inflammatory cascade. Yes, we definitely expect this patient's gonna have more inflammation in the post-op period, but we think the outcome is gonna be pretty routine. So there's no big chunk of cortex left, but we do have these tiny little dust-like particles of lens material that have gone to the anterior highlight face. So again, keep the patient on steroids for a longer period of time in the post-op period, and the patient will do great. 
I want to remind you as well, please go to cataractcoach.com. Sign up for our daily free email. Every morning in your inbox, a new email with a new video. I use YouTube to host the videos. If you're my YouTube fan, thank you very much. But keep in mind that I post YouTube videos in batches, and then we have them very well organized on cataractcoach.com.